All right. Welcome, everybody. This is the Thursday evening webinar. If you are here to learn about trading futures markets using the Viper tools, you have picked the right place to be. You're a wiener. First, got to go through our standard disclaimer, and then we can get on to some charts and look at some trades, which, of course, is why everybody's here. All communications to Viper trading systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody here and listening on the recording does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All righty, then. With that all being said, let's get on to some charts. I'm going to mix it up a little bit today, and I'm going to start with crude oil. And uh, tonight's topic, of course, I think is, uh, everybody knows, is um, nailing those entries. It's very important. Entries are probably, the trade entry is probably one, obviously one of the most important things to get right, because if you get the entry wrong, everything else is kind of uh, pretty tough. To, to recover from there. So with that being said, let's come over to screen one and start to look at a crude oil chart. Now for those of you who are visiting and those of you who are new, what you are looking at here is uh, a four range chart on crude oil. We just rolled from the June contract to the July contract, so we're trading July futures on crude oil. Crude oil is $10 a tick, so we're connected to the data feed from the broker. And this is a so these bars uh, are uh, and we're running on the Ninja Trader platform. Of course, all you guys know that we're still on Ninja Seven. And what happens is our software uh, runs against this data and creates the indicators that you see here. So we have the predictors, which are swing levels. They sort of look like little bubbles. Those paint in real time, of course. Everybody knows that. You can toggle them on and off. We have the power meters, which are four variants of trend. Background colors, green, uh, in-between color, and red. Uh, the bar colors, blue, yellow, and red. We have the stealth line. That's the sneaky looking line here. Sort of had that stealth line forever. We use it for different purposes, including trail stops and entries. Uh, and then, of course, the most prominent thing on here is the bands, which is the thick band is the middle band, the mid band, of course. And then we have four bands above it and four bands below it. And it provides form and structure for us to see and take trades. Now, just like any market before you can think about taking trade entries, what do we need to know first? Before we can take any trade entries, we need to know what? That's kind of a little pop quiz before we get started here. So you make sure, just uh, making sure everybody's awake, paying attention. You had your afternoon espresso, feeling good about charts and trading. What do we need to know? Tomorrow morning you wake up and you're going to start taking some trades and you load up the charts and you're going to trade crude oil. What do you need to know? Good. <laughs> Sam, you're you're quite the jokester. What did Trump just tweet out? <laughs> well, ironically, uh, if the tweets move the market, you might want to know that. You say they're kind of joking around, but, you know, they move the market sometimes. The trend. The trend is your friend. How many times have you heard that? A million times? I wish I had a dollar for every time I heard that. I have a gazillion of them. The, the trend is your friend. So the question then becomes, what is the trend? And how do you know? And secondarily, is there a lack of trend? Now, if there's a lack of trend, what is that called? 
So you don't have a trend. There is no trend. There's a lack of a trend. Then what is that? What, we have a name for that. There's several names for it. If there is no trend. Sideways, chop, consolidation. Good. That's all. That's all. And we're going to look at how you can very quickly discern between whether you're trending or not. Let's do this exercise together. Let's look at some trends, and then we'll look at some not trends, and then we'll do a couple exercises together where you can quickly say, is it trending or not? Because that's the first thing you got to know. Now let's start with the obvious uh, on crude oil here. You can see, it, let me get everybody kind of oriented time-wise here. So, so, so uh, midnight Pacific time was right here. So everybody knows that the close of the market in our my time here is like 1, 115. So that would have been like over here. This is where, um, you know, futures trading stops and pauses for, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. And then they fire it back up. And then 5 o'clock Pacific, this is the Asian session. Okay, so the Asian markets, Singapore, what have you, are all very active through midnight. And then midnight on into the early morning is the um, European session. So, you know, your European banks and markets are actively trading because that's their morning, right? Over in England, they trade futures. You know, of course, the big boys, the big banks trade. They have scripts running 24-7 against futures markets. Barclays, all the big guys. You know, they have software development teams all over the world that are constantly updating their scripts. So their algos are running, and so you can see right here that crude oil sold off. So this is what you call, I'll just state the obvious, this is a downtrend. Characteristics of a downtrend are lower highs and lower lows. So let's just put it right on here so it's clear to everybody. This is a downtrend. Pretty clear downtrend too. Well defined, clear, clean, obvious downtrend. Uh, background is red. Uh, bars are predominantly red. For the most part, you're trading underneath the mid band here. Um, the mid band and all the bands are stair stepping down, like you're going down flights of stairs to the next level down. This is all characteristics of a downtrend. Now, let's blow this up and talk about how we trade downtrends. So in in the in in most uh, price action, the push in the direction of the trend is called the thrust. Here's a good example right here. So you know we came up, you know you're coming out of a you were coming out of an uptrend here, hits the swing 72, cool, pulls back, pauses at the mid band. You could make the case that the initial thrust down was from say a region box located here at the mid band and here was the initial thrust now there are a lot of times when you don't catch the initial thrust because at the time this occurs we have what is called a phantom trade many many years ago we used to call this a deep probe you may have heard different names for it but when you're coming out of and uh, this is a good example when you were an uptrend here you come back and there's some profit taking and then the probe goes the market goes deeper Usually it goes out somewhere around the outermost band. Now, from a technical point of view, even though the background turned red, we are still kind of going sideways, and this might still be just a deep retracement on an overall up move. And so what I'm saying is it's okay to buy this outermost band here, the, what we call the phantom, right? And your goal is to get back to the mid band on that trade. That's what that is, okay? Now, I understand we've heard it a thousand times over the years. People, Traders get nervous about this deep probe situation here, understandably, because you know the bars are turning red, the background has turned red, you're well below the mid-band here, and you're starting to think short, right? You're starting to think short. Who's nervous? Quick show of hands, taking phantom trades like this. Because when you, well, afterwards you can see it's obvious it tanked and fell off the map, but at the time it happened, Let's go create what had happened. Okay, let's pretend. Let's pretend we're in the Asian session, and you know you're 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 trading the Asian session here, and you see that. 
show of hands. Yeah, okay, some of you say you don't like that. Well, you know, you can also make the case that you were at a, a support level at the current bottom of that range that had held all morning long, right? Uh, and you're sideways, and here you were heading up, and this could have just been a deep probe. So the technical approach, the way we teach this is, is you are still looking for longs down here. You're looking to buy this area. And as I said earlier, you know, your goal is to get back up here to the mid band. So that's what that trade is. That's the phantom trade. If you're nervous taking that, then don't take it. You know, I'm, you know, in the course of our training, we're going to show you tons of different types of trades to get in. You're going to develop your own um, repertoire of trades that you like. If you don't like the phantom trade, you know, you're not successful on them, you just, you're not comfortable, whatever the reason is, then just simply don't take it. We're just trying to explain what that is. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, but Brian K, I would not take that because it broke that swing and the background turned red. No, I understand that. That makes people nervous. You're thinking short now, right? You're looking for shorts on rollovers. I, I visually, I totally get it. Yeah, Davin. Well, th that's that's what when the background turns red and you see the predominantly red bars, there's a red stealth here. Uh, just visually, that's what I'm trying to say. Is just visually, you know, it's hard to think long down here. It's hard for a lot of traders. I'm just explaining the way we're looking at it, okay? Now, let's see what happens here. Now, of course, you see the, that that bounce actually worked out. You came up within a couple of ticks of the mid-band, and you at least got a scalp off. Now, when you get this, that's why I personally consider this area, when you come from sideways to up, and you're in this zone right here between the mid-band and, say, a support level and the outermost band in here, I consider in, in a scenario like you see this here, we teach this as a phantom long. However, you got to be cognizant and aware and ready for the fact that this could be, in fact, a trend change, and now you're looking for shorts. That's why we call this a transitional area. We're coming off the uptrend, sideways to up. And so we understand why the buyers bought here, but we also look to short. That's where I get in. I start to looking for the shorts. Of course, that's what happened. And then she starts to drop, checks that again, and it starts to fall off the map. So these can be a little tricky, all right? You know, it, you're, you're, you know you're kind of, uh, these transitional zones, until you get some confirmation, I mean, it was pretty clear here, now we're putting in a series of lower highs, and it's becoming clear that the market is probably not going to get back up to this top. It can't even get through the mid-band. And we're looking to short rollovers. So that was, I was trying, the point I was trying to get to. Is now that we're in a downtrend, the thrusting part of the move is the down push is considered what's called the thrust. Okay, so uh, you know if you're sort of no, new to price action and understanding how it works, when you go into a trend, you have the thrust, which is the push, in the direction of the trend okay and then you have what's called retracement or pullback which in the case of a trend is in the opposite direction of the trend so in this case in the downtrend the retracement would be up right thrust is down retracement of the trend Okay, so let's look at some examples. Here's the thrust. Here would be a retracement, right? I'm just going to do a few of them. You get the idea. A downtrend, the thrust is down. So here's another little thrust right here. Check and support. Here's another retracement. You get kind of a little series of them, right? Here's another one. Where's the thrust? Here's another thrust. Here's a big thrust down. You get the idea, right? So in the overall context of the downtrend move, it's it's punctuated by uh, a series of thrusting and retracement type motions. Now, the important takeaway from here is that when you are in a uh, in a trend, you only take retracement trades in the direction of the trend. 
only take retracement trades, not thrusts, in the direction of the trend. So what I'm to be explicitly clear about this, what I'm saying in this example is here is the thrust. This is not where we get in. Right? We look for pullbacks into resistance like such. This is the trade. This is where a lot of traders run into trouble. Because traditionally, if you're a breakout trader, what you're thinking is, is I want to see support be broken. So most traders look to support short here. That's not correct. Okay, you get, if, you, if you're the trader who shorts a breakout trader, and we used to trade breakouts many, many long time, time ago, and we changed that to retracement trading. So in the case here, this is a retracement. This is the short entry here, not here. Let me show a couple more examples. Here's the thrust in the direction of the trend down. Here's the retracement. So the trade entry is here, not here. Here we get another instance where we fall down. Here's another thrust. That's not where you get in, obviously. But we get a retracement up here. And we'll talk about the details of, of, of how you get in these trades in, in a few minutes. I want just, at this level, we're, you know, we're sailing about 10,000 feet in the air, and there's a very high sort of conceptual understanding of what we're doing. We'll drill down, and we'll show you how to get in. That's, that's a whole separate topic. But you can't really start to figure where to get in if you don't know, you know, how you're going to approach the trend. So, for instance, if you find that when you get into trades, you're always stopping out, it might be the fact that you're getting in on these thrust moves. Because you're shorting here, and maybe you have a 10 or 12 tick stop, so it's come up as nailing your stop. When it comes down here, you get in again. Bam, get your stop again. Here's how the psychology of this works. You're watching the market drop. You're dropping, dropping, dropping. You're dropping, dropping, dropping. Now you're convinced down here, all right, this puppy's falling off the map. I better get in. So you hit a market short and you get in somewhere down here. You're convinced. You're finally convinced that this thing is tanking. But I'll be darned, as soon as you get in, that market knows you got in. And it always knows. And it pulls right back. And you always feel he, it's almost like there's some kind of thing down there in Wall Street. Waiting for you to get in. Right? And as soon as you do, you feel instantly heat. And ba bam, ba bam, ba bam. It comes up. Sure enough, it gets your stop. Again. Dang it. How does this happen? How does this keep happening to me? Every time I get in, I feel heat and it takes my stop. And as soon as it takes my stop, gosh darn it, it rolls over and comes right in my favor again. And then this, and then it repeats. History starts repeating itself. Quick show of hands. How many of that? How many of you am I describing in here? You're buying and selling thrust moves and continually getting stopped out over and repeatedly, only to find the market goes rolls over and goes in your favor. It's frustrating. I know. Hey, I look. I did it for a long time. I know. I remember. That was me. I'm describing me from a long time ago. I lived that life. It's horrible. You got to break out of that. You got to break free. <laughs> yes, and it's been very painful. Mario says I've been there and I did that. All right, so you got to break. The takeaway, the important takeaway away here is you got to break that cycle. Okay, you've got to think retracement. We, uh, whenever you look at markets and they're trending. What always should be going through your head is I've got to find a pullback to get in. I've got to find a pullback to get in. All right, good. Okay, so that's the downtrend, and that's how we trade it. Let me show you another part of crude. And let's do a couple quick exercises of where we tried to say up, down, or sideways. Up, down, or sideways. Up will be when you feel it's an uptrend. D will be... We're going to look, I'm going to do some snapshots of crude here. I'm going to go back a couple of days. I'll do some snapshots and I'll show you. Now, I'm only going to give you about five seconds. You're going to look at a snapshot of a market and you're going to type in for the, t for the team here, U for up, D for down, S for sideways. Just going to pop them up here and you can just type them in. Are you ready? Yeah, well, you know, it, it, here's the thing. For for those of you who are new and visiting, you you don't have to. 
um, you know, like anything, it takes time to learn how this stuff works. Okay, you get, I wouldn't unduly put pressure on yourself. Like you gotta, you know, in the next half an hour figure out how all this works. I think first of all, you gotta understand conceptually how it works, and then over time, you're gonna have to build the mechanics of getting in and out of trades. But what we're gonna do this exercise right now is probably one of the most important things. Is you've got to be able to look at a market very quickly, discern, am I going up? down and sideways and then that's going to drive your thinking from there as far as do I take a trade do I not take a trade am I going long or short okay all right so let's start with this one this is on crude yesterday remember up U for up D for down and S for sideways five seconds on the clock we're looking at this area on the right hand side of the chart up down or sideways Crude oil yesterday about mid-morning between, uh, I don't know, this looks to be about 9 o'clock-ish and 11-something, 11.20. Up, down, or sideways. Four seconds on the clock. What say you, team? Tomorrow morning you get up and you look at crude and it looks like this. What, what, are your think what is your thinking? Up, down, or sideways? Three seconds on the clock. You make the call. We try to make these these webinars interactive, so you you know. I've always felt that when you participate in something, it's it's easier to learn. It stays with you longer. It's easy to learn it and stays with you much longer. Two seconds up, down, or sideways. Crude oil yesterday morning. One second times almost up. I'm, you don't have to call any trades in here. By the way, this little exercise is not designed for trade calling. We're not. We're not at, the, at this stage of things. We're not calling anything. We're just saying, is this, is the market simply up, down, or sideways? All right, time's up. Most of you got this correct. This is a sideways market. Yeah, don't 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 worry about long or short just yet. We're not calling trades yet. We're just simply identifying the status of the market. Sideways. Okay, characteristics of a sideways market. The Swing levels are all about the same at the top and the bottom of a range, which you can clearly see, see right here. Support and resistance aren't, isn't moving. Another good characteristic visually that's easy to see is that the, the mid-band is flat and going sideways, and a lot of times it'll be yellow. A lot of yellow bars, you know, there's no, yellow means lack of direction, right? A lot of yellow bars in here. So support resistance levels holding, so you're not getting higher highs and higher lows. You're not getting lower highs. The background is this sort of ubiquitous opaque color. It's not green or red. See that? So absolutely, this is a sideways market. There's no question about it. Now, we get this comment all the time, all the time, all the time, a million times, all the time. Everybody says, well, you know, everybody's a you know a genius looking back, you know, how... I can't tell in real time if we're sideways. Now, that's a good point. So how do you do that? How do you do it? Let me show you how you do it. Here's, how, here's exactly how you do it. And you can do this in any market at any time to determine if you, in fact, are sideways. You draw those lines, Brian K. That's right. That's right. All right. So here, here's crude coming along. Gary's real good about doing this in the room, so, and this is something you should practice yourself because the ability to draw a line, couple of lines on your chart is going to change all your trading forever. Seriously, I'm not kidding. That's how important it is. All right, so at this stage of the game, let's do the exercise together, and then we'll we'll do it. We'll you know we'll do another one later on. Right here at this point, where might you put some lines of support and resistance? Call out a level. Here's the numbers over here. Where where would you put if you were to put two lines? So we're at 8:55 yesterday morning. Where would you put a couple lines for support and resistance? If you're going to do it right on your own chart. Some of you are new to this, so I'll help you out a little bit. Okay. Well, you can see that there's a swing getting established kind of up in here, right? Yeah, I see some numbers coming in. Good, good. Davin, Michael, Brian, Kenneth. Excellent, John. Yeah, yeah, and you'd put another one down here, right? Here, there's another one right there. there that's it. Bam, what would that take? Like 50, 10 seconds? Not even? There's your resistance and there's your support. 
Now, you can make the case in here you're kind of sideways, but heading up a little bit because the background is green and you're getting sort of a series of higher lows, lower highs. You, maybe you had a little mid band box right here you took long. See right in the mid band here, nice little region box set up for you, a nice long trade. But yeah, you're starting to put a swing up here, just size 72, and you got support at 7141. It's a 50 tick range, very tradable. Right? Everybody see that? Okay. Yeah, you know, you could put, uh, I think a couple of you are typing in that you can make the case that there's kind of a little shelf in the middle here. Uh, okay, I see that. Here, here, here. That's kind of more or less in the middle. So, yeah, okay, that's the middle of the, of the, of the tr current trading range. There you go. There's your support and resistance level. So let's, let's walk forward. Okay, here's 9 o'clock. Here's 9.18. All right. Now, at this point, I'm going to pause it. Now, this shelf is no longer in play. Okay, we've moved. We walk forward here. Now, here's how. Here's what you got to do. You got to notice that when you formed this little box here at the at the at the mid band right in here, what you have to do is ask yourself: Were we able from here? Did you ever really get a long trade to get back up into here? And the answer is no, right? If you drew a region box on here, and at the time you were looking for longs, did you ever get a long in here? No. All right, so now that's resistance. See it? All right. Now this shelf right here that we drew earlier from here, did that hold? No. So what you what you're starting to do when you here, here's the simplest way to look at it. Here's just the absolute simplest way to look at it. Whenever you have these swings that start to get established, you simply just come in and you put a line right there. That's all you got to do. And you need at least two or three points to connect. Here you have another one down in here. Okay, now you're starting to see that there's a little support level forming in here. And now what are you getting here? you're getting a smaller range within the context of the overall range. So the overall range is still here. That is not been, we didn't take that out, and we didn't take that out. So you've got a smaller consolidation range within the framework of the overall range. Yes? Everybody see that? See what's starting to form? Now let's, now let's go ahead and advance walking forward. See how those levels are holding? See them? See the levels holding? Now you knew back all the way back here at like nine, something was this about nine twenty 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 five nine twenty five Pacific time. You put these lines in. You had these lines from all the way over here, back even before nine o'clock. These yellow lines were already in place, but now you're starting to establish a tighter range within the range. And so walking forward all the way, all the way, all the way over here to to eleven thirty, you knew you were in this range. You see the points you connected. So it is possible, and you see it in the live room every day, for you to identify very quickly, am I still trending or am I going sideways? This is extremely important to develop this skill set. If you want to be successful trading futures using our tools, you've got to draw these lines. You've got to teach yourself how to put these lines at support and resistance. We have traders all over the world that do this with us. have been doing it for years. And they can trade any market doing this. They can trade overnight, you know, 6A, Swissy. They can trade uh, that Asian session, European session. We talked to a guy this morning, trades get up super early, trades crude oil in that in that uh, early session. Caught all those shorts today. So now, now let's say that you have identified pretty clearly, you know you're going sideways, okay? So, so the sideways is the definition of... Some people call it sideways, some people call it chop, some people call it consolidation. There's all kind of different names for it. It all means the same thing. By definition, this is the lack of a trend. And like we said earlier, you've got this sort of uh, opaque kind of background. It's not red or green. Mid-band sideways and yellow. Support and resistance is holding. It's not breaking out and heading in either direction. This long trade never happened. And so there you have it. 
So now the next question is, is this tradable, yes or no? What say you, team? Put five seconds on the clock. Just a yeah, just type in. Yes? No. This range right here. And how do you know? You don't have to type in how you know. Uh, we'll talk about how you know in a minute. Just a simple question. Is this tradable, yes or no? Is this range tradable? You know, put the question right here. Tradable, yes or no? So tomorrow morning you get up. Pull up your charts, and you put some lines on them, and it kind of looks like that. And you said, "Okay, well, I see. Yeah, I'm the way we're in. We're in pretty. It's pretty choppy right here. We're in. A, we're in a range, range bound. And then the next thing you have to answer is ask yourself: Is it tradable? Yes or no? What say you, team? This range right here. Are you going to be trading it? All right, boy, we got quite a mix of answers. We got Davin, Mario, Mario, Kenneth, Dave, no meat on the bone from Mario, all saying no, but predominantly saying no. There's only Robert is saying yes. John is saying yes. Ruben, hey, Ruben, buddy, came in late. By the way, this is recorded. We're going to get it up on the web tomorrow. So if you, a bunch of folks came in late, don't worry about it. We'll, you know, we'll put it up on the web. Everybody can watch the whole thing tomorrow. We'll send it to everybody. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta you gotta uh, you gotta measure the range. It's got to be at least 20 to 25 ticks in size. Uh, so support you know is down around this 55-ish area here, and then you know you can make the, well the tight part of the range is actually up here around 75. So you know you're right at not even not even 20 ticks. I'd, I'd weigh in on the no side of of tradability here. Now, let me quickly explain why. you got to have at least 20, 25 plus, 30 plus ticks. Because if you're going to look to enter a trade, either short or long, you can't put the trade right at the apex or the bottom of where the support or resistance is. you got to fade that, but usually by at least five ticks or more. So the actual trade setup would look more like this. So in other words, I'm drawing lines, these blue lines at support and resistance levels, but that's not the entry level. That's in a range. You've got to get in and out before you get to that level. So where I'm drawing these inside lines are actually where the trades would occur, right? This is where you're going to get filled, plus a little slippage. So the actual trade in this, in this tight range is here. Is there enough meat on that bone to make any money? By the time you factor in some slippage and a little commission in and out, you're getting in and out here. You know, 60 to, you know, 68, 8 ticks, we're actually getting in and out in the range. 8 ticks, is that enough to make any money, 8 ticks? Yeah, well, slippage is usually a tick either way, and then factor in some commission. 8 ticks in the middle of this range, are you making any money in here? Who's making the money? <laughs> your broker <laughs> your broker's making money in this range you aren't making any money the guy collecting the commission on all the trading you're doing in here is making the money right yeah okay so just the, the takeaway here is this range is too tight to trade so what did we learn from this we learned that we can quickly use these support and resistance levels to draw lines to quickly determine that we are in a range that's what we learned first that's what we did right because everybody says oh well, you know armchair quarterback you know here's you're sitting comfy in your nice leather chair here at 5 30 on a thursday looking back yesterday oh yeah that was a you know it was a big real tight little range there well i just showed you how you can do it real time right and then furthermore you can do a quick assessment you don't need to do pull out your gonculator and, and your slide rule and do 50 million calculations. You can just ba-bam, put in a line, put in a line. You do it as it's coming in at you. You know, you, you go down here. You're like, okay, well, I'm going to be buying here and I'm selling there. Oh, just, there's no meat on the bone. Let that baby go. Go look for something else. Take a break. Go get some coffee. There's no trades there. Everybody see how to do that because I'm going to move on. Everybody see how to do that? <laughs> What's the slide rule? 
<laughs> Google slide rule. You'll see what it is. It's what people use, engineers and what have you, mathematicians, accountants, and bankers used before there were calculators. So I'm dating myself. That goes way back. A slide rule. <laughs> yeah, Purdue used them. Yeah, we used to use them in school. Yeah, a long time ago. This is like 50s, 60s, and 70s. That's before gonculators came out. All right, let's get another instrument up here. Oh, so you knew what it was. You were just kidding. What do we want to see? Let's take a quick vote before we run out of time here. Let's get off of crude. Let's get something else up here. Let's take a vote. Type in your instrument, and we'll try to quickly get through a whole bunch. You want to see gold? You want to see what you want to see what old uh, Ru Russell did today? Oh, we're getting all manner of things coming in here. Six. Okay, Dennis, I see you can't cast 57 votes for 6B. I see you hitting the 6B button like 84 times. Let's okay. Let's do this. Let's let's. Uh, I I okay. We'll look at 6B, Dennis. Don't 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 panic. I know you. Can, it's like stuff in the ballot box. 800 6Bs. We'll we'll look at 6B. I guarantee you. Okay. <laughs> Dave's typing in 400 Russells. Okay, okay. Let, let's let's go to the Russell real quick, and then we'll do 6B. And I see a gold vote, so we'll squeak a whole bunch in here. All right. Let's do some trend identification together. And I'm going to start off easy, and then I'm going to make it. I'm then going to make it really hard. Okay, because it's not. You know, let's do this exercise together. Let's do a couple exercises together. I think it's going to really help you when you start looking at markets tomorrow. Okay. Let's do another exercise of up, down, and sideways. I'm going to address that, Mike T. Mike T. Is I know I'm going to address. I'm going to, I see that's a very good question. I'm going to actually address it in the two, two exercises we're just about to do on the Russell. Ready? Here we go. Five seconds on the clock, from about eight o'clock Pacific to say 9:30, was the Russell in an up uh, U for up, S for sideways, D for down. Five seconds on the clock. Tomorrow morning, you're trading the Russell, and it starts to look like this from here over to here. Is it up, down, or sideways? Three seconds. Get your cast your vote. Got three more seconds, two more seconds to cast your vote, up, down, or sideways. It's, what is the trend? Is it up, D for down, S for sideways? I got to tell you, this is a pretty obvious one. So, you know, this, you should be hitting this out of the park with almost no thought at all. One second left, cast your vote. Uh, between 8 and 9.30, so this swath of time right here, from about here, ish to over here i'll give you one more second cast your vote good time's up up it's clearly up you have a green background you have higher highs and higher lows mid band and all the bands are stair stepping up all the characteristic of a very clear strong powerful no question about it uptrend move now before we come off of this Remember we talked about, let's start talking a little bit about um, trade entry. In an uptrend, the primary thrust is up. That is the thrust. The retracement then is the pullbacks into support, which is where we take our trades. Here's a good example right here. Let me blow this up a little bit so you can see a little bit more clearly. This is a trend right here at the mid-band. This would be considered sort of your classic mid-band trade right here. Now, I'm not going to drill down into the, you know, the, spend the next 25 minutes talking about how to draw these boxes. We have entire webinars devoted to how to use the object trader region box to get long. But this is a long trade from this bounce here. Here is the next thrust up right here. Where's the next retracement? That's the thrust. Where is the next retracement? Everybody see it? Right here. 
You could make a very good living if the only thing you did was pick a couple of markets at certain times of the day in the morning and take mid-band trades at or around the mid-band. Anywhere in the sweet spot, and I've shown this countless times between here and here. You have shallow retracements that have to pierce the stealth line in line six. We show that over and over and over in other webinars. I suggest you watch them. You got the mid-band trade textbook, beautiful, just take it. In a trend, it's up. And then you have, of course, I always we showed these before, deeper retracements to come just underneath the mid-band. If you just learn how to take trades right in this sweet spot zone right here, when a market's trending, you're gonna make you're gonna make very good money pretty much every day. Brian K says, load the boat. Yeah, when you see a beautiful trend like this, you want to leverage up. This is the place to leverage. If you're ever thinking about putting multiple contracts on a beautiful move like this, this is where you do it. And then, of course, this is leg three up here. Everybody can see it. Kiss the mid-band right here perfectly. And then there's your leg three. Uptrend. Buying retracements into support long only. Perfect. Everybody got that right. Total gold star for everybody. You know, and then she goes sideways for a while. You know, then it's consolidates. Not unusual. This move was huge. It went from 1616 16 all the way to 30. That's 150 ticks. This is a 150 tick move. If you're going to put coin in your trading account, this is the way to do it. Let's do the exercise again. Russell, earlier in the morning. Earlier in the morning from about 7 o'clock till 8. Ready? Five seconds on the clock. We're going to do the exercise again. We're going to do a few more of these. And we're going to do it on gold, and we'll do it on 6B. Up, down, or sideways. Time's running out. Four seconds. U, S, or D? Three seconds. It's just a letter. Cast your vote. You're trading Russell. You wake up tomorrow and Russell looks like this. What are you going to do? Two seconds. Cast your vote. One second. This is another easy one. Time's up. Down. Yes, if you voted down, it was correct. The trend direction is very definitely, unquestionably down. Now, I want to look at some things here, okay? This was a little more challenging in the sell-off in the fact that you can see that the trend was down and it was breaking down. Now, I'm going to help you with this a little bit, and then we're going to do some where you're going to try to figure this out yourself, okay? When we drew the sweet spot around the mid-band, when we said to take trades, you can see here that the earliest entry in the first thrust was in the kiss of resistance here off the mid-band. You know, might have you have taken that? Yes, we were in the room. I think we called it. I can't recall. I did a lot of trades this morning. I don't remember if I took this or not. But here was the initial thrust down that actually wound up changing the background red right here. Now, I want to blow this up and get a little more specific on this retracement right here. So this is the thrust, down, background turns red, stair-stepping down, bars are red, st stealth is red, everything is red. It's clearly a downtrend. Now, here is a retracement. I'm going to ask a quick pop quiz question for you here. Is this retracement right here in the downtrend sufficient to take the short, yes or no? Five seconds on the clock. That's all you get. You got to make these these decisions very quickly. When you want to get this, is kind of in the subconscious of your mind, where you're not. It's like breathing. You don't want to think about it. You see a pattern, but bambo, you take it. You don't just sit on there. Well, you know, I don't know. When you do that, you hesitate. The trade's gone by the time you figure it out. That's why I do five second drills like this. Simple question, yes or no, three seconds left. Is this retracement sufficient for short trade entry, yes or no? Right here. Remember what we said was our criteria. That should be ingrained right in the back of your brain for trade entry. D, 
deep enough yes or no, one second left. Right here. Time's up. Yes. Yes. What criteria did this satisfy to take the short? Remember? What is the criteria that should be ingrained in our, in our trading brains? We have to pierce line two. The thin line here is called line two. On the long side, it's line six, which is this thin green line. Remember what we said on the long entry? It has to pierce the stealth and line six. So in that case, the long entry has to come into here as a minimum, as a minimum. The opposite is true on the short. It has to pierce line two and the red stealth to have enough depth to take it. This has enough meat on the bone, and this is the reason we say this, to at least get back, if the trend continues, to here, where we can get a scalp off, move our stop to, tie, to, uh, to close to our entry, and get a free trade off. And then if we're lucky, and the trend continues, we get a nice runner move like that. Good. If you answered yes, that was correct. This is sufficiently deep to take the trade. Now, where some people, let's talk about the deeper trades. We talked about, let me do another pop quiz, make sure you're awake. Is this a phantom trade as we defined it earlier in the webinar, yes or no? Is this, five seconds on the clock, it's ticking down, it's ticking down. Your decision-making time is, is, is going away quick. Based on the criteria that we said earlier in this webinar, is that a legitimate phantom trade, yes or no? Remember what we called a phantom trade. You've heard it a thousand times in the room and here. Gary drew 10 of them this morning. Three seconds. Is this a legitimate phantom trade? And I'll help you out, short, yes or no. Two seconds, time clicking out. One second, legit. Time's up. Yes. So remember we defined a phantom, right? In a long trend, the phantom is comes out to the outermost band here. It comes to the opposite end. This is called a deep probe. We used to call it deep probe. The bars turn the other color. It freaks some people out. I understand that. Now, if you drew a mid-band box right here for the short, you never got filled short. This never filled short. It went deeper. That happens sometimes, okay? But the trend overall down is still intact. And like I said, you know, if you're not comfortable with phantom trades, don't take them. You did have a secondary opportunity to get in this trade here. It did accomplish its first goal, which was to get to the mid-band. Remember, when you take a phantom, you want to at least get to the mid-band. That's your goal. Remember, we looked at the other one. It was the other way, remember? And it's quite possible that you could have boxed it in here or here and caught the tail end scalp of this little push down here. Good. Most excellent. All right. We're almost out of time. I've got like seven minutes. Let me get off of Russell. You guys did, you guys and gals in here did excellent tonight on that. Let's get the gold up and 6B. I have gold. Let's do a couple quick exercises on gold, and then we'll pop 6B up, and then we'll probably be out of time. Got a big dubs game tonight starting in about 15 minutes. Warriors are playing Houston in Houston, game five, tied 2-2, two -two, if you're tracking the finals. Five seconds on the clock. You make the call on gold. This is gold today. Ready? Five seconds. I'm short in this market. I don't know about you. I'm loading the boat on the short side. D, S, or U. D for down. S for sideways. U for up. Four seconds left. You cast the vote on gold. What were you doing with gold today? Here's the midnight hour in Cali. Okay. Here's Cali. Midnight. European session, I'm shorting it, and I'm using your account to do it. Are you with me? Up, down, or sideways on gold today, the whole day. Here's here's the close. 
This is the whole. You're looking at the entire day here. Here's the close right over here. Through 115 Pacific. The entire day was gold going up, down, or sideways. You have two seconds left. Am I messing with you? Or am I on the right side of the trade? Time's up. The trend is up. This could not be any more up. It is green, blue, bars, stair-stepping up. I don't, higher lows, higher highs. How can you not, everybody here should see this. The trend is up. You are buying pullback retracements into support. You don't short this. Only, long only, all day long. Here, quite possibly, was your first entry. Here, at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're probably still asleep. I know I was. Europeans are buying gold today. Pull back here, pull back here, pull back here. Long, here's the thrust, pull back, retracements. Where's the next one? You see it? There's no phantom here. The trend is up. It's been up since the, since yesterday. It's still up. Yeah, this is an uptrend. There's no phantoms here. This is total up. This is total up move. You're buying pullbacks into support. Here's the next trade entry right here. Yeah, let me. Here's the pullback. There's textbook mid man box. Textbook. Just doesn't get any better than that. They're just handing you money on the long side. Just handing it to you. Somebody walks up and gives it a powerful trend, and it comes right back to the mid man and sits there and forms a perfect box. You sh need to take that. That is just that is somebody up with a pile of C notes in their hand, walking up to you and saying, "Please take this from me. Here, it's yours." I'm not being facetious here. I'm being truthful. That's what it is. Two questions before we leave gold. This retracement here, is this a legitimate long? Five seconds on the clock for both of those. This retracement here, where, I'm, where my cursor is circling, legitimate long enough deep retracement to take a, a long yes or no? Right here at 6.45 a.m. Pacific, right here. Is this deep enough, yes or no, to get long on gold? Four seconds. Just type in a Y or an N. I mean, you should know this stuff by now, right? Y or N, yes or no, three seconds. Cursor, 6.45 a.m. Pacific time, right here. Yes or no, one second. Type in your answer. Time's up. No. No, this does not meet the criteria. Question number two. At 6.50 a.m. Pacific time, this retracement, sufficient depth for legitimate long entry, yes or no? Four seconds. Type in a wire and in. These, I hope you find these helpful because, you know what, tomorrow morning this pattern is going to repeat itself and you're going to ask yourself that question at who knows what, 6.58 a.m. Pacific time, gold's going to pull back and it's going to look just like this, and the question on the table is, and you have three seconds, are you going to take it, yes or no? This right here, right here. Tomorrow morning, are you going to take a long on gold if it did that? Two seconds. One second. Yes. Okay, good. So I see most of you are getting this. This was a no. Why was this a no? What's the two criteria we need on, a, on sufficient depth of retracement? It has to pierce the stealth line. Check mark yes. Did it break line six like this one did? Did this one break line six? No. Check mark no. This is a no. It's not deep enough. Did this break stealth in line six? Check mark yes. Check mark yes. Yes. This was a yes. This was a no. This was a yes. Line stealth and line six on up. Stealth in line two on downtrend. So here again, this was a no. Not sufficient depth of it. Not enough. It got the stealth, but it didn't break line six, where you can clearly see this one did. This was a yes. This was a no. All right. Let's see, we're running out of time, but I promised uh, who wanted 6B. I forget who asked for 6B. Was that you, Kenneth?
Somebody asked for 6B. Uh, I have to go in my instrument manager. I don't have that one loaded here right here. Oops, hold on, give me a second. I gotta get that on in my instrument box here. Mm -hmm. 6B is the British pound futures. Uh, we don't trade that in the room. Um, some people trade currency futures. Uh, the euro, 6E, 6C, the Canadian, uh, 6A, the Aussie dollar. That trades uh, 6A and 6J are active in the Asian session. If you're looking for something to trade in the evening time, that would be candidates for you. They, basically, between here and midnight Pacific, those, those things are moving sometimes, 6A and 6J. Uh, trading methodology and entry uh, uh, is all the same. Charts all look the same. Everything's the same. Template, you know, there's a, a, the way you get in, the way you look at trends, every, not the, it doesn't matter what the instrument is. It really doesn't matter what time of day either. All the entry logic is the same. Now, theoretically, um, you, you should get some moves on, uh, on uh, here's 6B right here. Now, here's what you're going to find with these current currency futures is, you know, uh, you know, uh, some days they're moving and some days they aren't. You know, okay, here's an example over here where, you know, you got into a trend, British pound futures, pound. Uh, so the equivalent in 4X would be the uh, British pound USD cross pair. This is the futures version of that, 6B. Uh, e yes, you would look to trade a two range, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, uh, um, because it's normally half or less the movement. If you put a four on there, you're going to fall asleep. I mean, it takes forever for a four to, uh, but you can trade the two. The trade's good. Yeah, use the use the two. Yeah, so you know, here's an example where, you know, uh, you had a little bit of sideways to up here. This was the second, 22nd. This is a couple of days ago. Here's the European session on the 22nd, Asian session right here, sideways, and a little pop up. You know, some maybe some bad uh, economic news came in. You know, it started to sell off. This was a nice downtrend. Uh, just to orient you to our time, 6:30 uh, when the equity markets opened was right about there. So he had a little bit of an uptrend, then he started to sell 6B off. And then this particular day, uh, you know, you were taking short trades on retracements here. Here's a short here. Here's a short here. Short here. Trend is down. Here's the 23rd. Still short. Here's a kiss here. Everybody see the kiss and rolls? These are all short entries on 6B. If you want to trade currency futures, that's the way you got to look at it. Sometimes you get movement. Sometimes you don't. You know, there's there's days where it just goes sideways. Continue to sell 6B off into uh, the 23rd. Here, short kiss, short kiss. All worked out. And then you go sideways a little bit. And you start going sideways, sort of sideways. And you were side here's today. Here's the, here's this morning right here. Here's midnight today. Uh, this morning today, transitioning into here. Asian session sideways. Asian uh, European session starting to try to poke her head up. You got a little a long poke here in the European session. Did you have enough? Did you have a chance to get in it? Pop quiz before we close. Last question of the session. Is this retracement on 6B sufficient to take a long yes or no? Last question for the team. You make the call. 6B. Now, this would have been early. This is 1.30 a.m. in the morning. European session, trading 6B, you drank 46 cups of coffee and you can't go to sleep. You're staring at a 6B chart and your eyes are all glazed and it pulls back like this. Do you pull the trigger on the long, yes or no? Last question, four seconds to decide. Of course, it's hard to decide because you're blurry with all that coffee. Notwithstanding whether the fact that you're blurry eye with the coffee and it's 1.30 in the morning, can you take the trade, yes or no? Two seconds. 
last exercise of the evening. I appreciate everybody sticking around. We're going a little bit over tonight. That's okay. No big deal. It's all good. Time's up. Yes. What is the criteria that were met? Did it pierce stealth line, the green snaky stealth line? Check mark yes. Did it pierce line six and close below it? A couple of bars stayed below it. Check mark yes. Sufficient depth. Answer is yes. Turned out to be a good trade where you made some coin. Six six B is six and a quarter a tick. So it's right in between um, the other equities like YM and NASDAQ that are $5 a tick in terms of risk return on the uh, value of the ticks. And it's, and it's uh, less than crude at 10, gold at 10, and ES at 1250. So you're kind of in the middle there. All right, that's a wrap. Any final questions? Hopefully everybody got something out of this. We try to teach something old and new and make sure you're all up to speed on what markets are doing. Uh, we do have a room tomorrow morning, 5.55 Gary. I get in there usually a few minutes before the uh, open, 6.30, 6.20.